All right, I got another one for you guys. Uh, today we are going to be going over two emails. They were not sent to me, but they were forwarded over to me. And these emails came from a David Sparkman. If you know who that is, my apologies. But he's been going around saying a lot of bad things about me. He's been lying, like misrepresenting the facts of his friend Priscilla Bolito trying to maliciously prosecute me. And he's supporting her in what she did and just completely getting everything wrong. So we're going to go over these two emails and then we're also going to go over... Um, some other, uh, me just kind of clearing the air, showing my side. But before I really get going into these emails, a while back ago I did a video where I addressed a rumor. The rumor was that I was a felon and the Sheriff's Department found out and they revoked my concealed carry permit. Just to <laughs> let everyone know, one of the people that were spreading that rumor was David Sparkman. And I think it's unfortunate that he's making a massive mistake by putting a lot of these things in writing. I don't know if he's aware of the ramifications of doing that, but you know, we're just gonna we're gonna move on. So I wanted to let everybody know that he is one of the people that was spreading the rumor that I'm a felon. And just to be clear, I'm not a felon. I've never been a felon. The sheriff's department had nothing to do with revoking my concealed carry permit. It was procedural from the court's end. And it was just because David Sparkman's friend, Priscilla Bolito, lied uh, to try and get a protective order on me. It had since been dismissed for a lack of violence, force, or threat, which is like required in a protective order. But uh, the good news is I did get my concealed carry permit back. So we're going to move on to these emails. Here's one of them. I'm blocking out like he keeps... <laughs> I don't know why everyone wants to drag other people into stuff about me. Um, I think it's because they know that they can't get to me. So the next best thing is to try and convince other people that they shouldn't uh, associate with me or be friends with me or anything like that. So um, out of privacy things, I'm just going to block anything referring to other people except for Priscilla out. So. David Sparkman is saying in an email, he basically is expecting a certain individual to distance himself from me. He's claiming that right now it is guilt by association. Um, he says, I believe Priscilla was threatened with court action if she proceeded. So she withdrew from the case. Let's pause right there. Nobody threatened Priscilla. I never threatened Priscilla. Okay. And if we're talking about court action, it's completely lawful. Even though I didn't, I had no communication with Priscilla since March 9th, 2022. But if someone, this is why I don't use the word threaten so you, loosely. It is legal to tell someone that you are going to sue them. Okay, that's not a threat. And if we actually go to the definition of a threat, I mean, we're talking about inflicting pain, injury, damage, hostile action, like to cause damage or danger, things like that. It's not saying I'm going to sue you, you know, and it's definitely not what Priscilla was trying to allude to, which was I shared um, public information about her and she really, we're going we're gonna to watch a video about that and what she was saying. She was really claiming she wasn't threatened with bodily harm, but you know, she took it as a threat that I was sharing public information pertaining to her, my criticisms, my First Amendment protected activity, she apparently deemed as threatening, uh, which is, you know, crazy. All right, let's go back to the email. Uh, he says, the Sheriff's Department found enough evidence in talking to that woman, presumably me, to pull her concealed carry permit. Again, the Sheriff's Department had nothing to do with my concealed carry permit being revoked. It was the courts and it was procedural. Okay. Um, I did go before the courts and even though I hadn't had the protective order hearing yet, it didn't matter that I hadn't had my opportunity to be heard. They don't know whether the allegations are true or false at that particular point. And, you know, I think it's messed up that they infringe on individual Second Amendment right just simply over a bogus allegation but you know we'll see if we can have some legislation rewritten uh, pertaining to that in the future. Uh, David Sparkman says 
You put too much trust in the judicial logic, but I have sat on a jury and seen evidence suppressed and incorrect evidence given. There is much you don't know. So I'm going to stop right there because David Sparkman loves to try and belittle people and make them feel like they don't know anything and he's the smartest guy and he knows everything. But again, look, we've already got like four lies already out of this guy. Um, he says, yes, I know Christina from the meetings of the Patriots Club. It's actually the Patriots Pub and it doesn't exist anymore. He says, I'm an angry woman. She filed complaints against me as well as trying to remove me from Nextdoor. Nextdoor is like a, a, an app. It's like another local neighborhood social media. He said, I used her tweets to reverse that. and She was removed. She is not a nice person. Lies, lies, lies. Okay, I'm still on the Nextdoor Neighbor app. And he, my understanding, got in trouble for two things. Um, one was that he had more than one account and one of them got taken down because Nextdoor Neighbor app is like really strict. So they disabled his like alt account that he used when he would get banned. And the other thing, he claimed I told it on Twitter um, a minor to kill himself, which was a flat out lie. And he got in trouble for that. So, you know. Anyways, oh, here's the, um, there were many hateful posts on Twitter. One even suggested the kid kill himself. The sheriff's department is aware and looking into it. Okay, well, that never freaking happened. This guy just creates his own narrative and uh, really uses it to, like, manipulate people. All right, this is the second email. He uh, goes back to, like, belittling people. The, the individual that got this, I, I feel bad. They probably were like, what the heck? Like, why is he trying to make me feel like I don't know anything? And mind you, David Sparkman was not in any of the court cases with uh, pertaining to Priscilla Bolito and myself. He didn't show up to any of them, so I don't know why he's acting like he knows anything. But he says, what do you know about court hearings, about intimidation, about those who seek power and discredit others to play quote-unquote office politics? It appears you don't know much about the political world. Priscilla was intimidated by threats and didn't show, but this has nothing to do with her. Hold on. I don't understand what he means by Priscilla was intim intimidated by threats and didn't show. Nobody threatened Priscilla. She admitted that in court. And she showed up to all the hearings and the trial dates. She was there. So, again, th this guy just keeps lying. I don't know if this is intentional lies or if he's being told things and without making sure it's accurate he's just repeating it or if I mean God forbid something um, is uh, he's suffering some sort of a medical issue like I don't know what's going on with this guy but uh, he says it has to do with the disruptive group back in Christina which is clearly which clearly is not working for the good of our community what freaking disruptive group he's He's really trying to demonize anyone that associates with me or is friends with me. And uh, I'm sorry, what's not looking good for our community? I'm shocked that there are so many people that apparently like free speech. But if the speech is something that they don't want to hear, then they, they hate it. I, I don't get it. Um, he says, I am more knowledgeable than you think. I call BS on that, uh, considering how many... Uh, you're getting so much wrong in, in this. And this isn't all that I have. He's put these lies in writing multiple times before, even referring to me as a felon, but I'm not going to show everything. I like to keep stuff like in my back pocket too. Um, he says, I sat on a jury where evidence was suppressed and witnesses gave incorrect information. They misremembered, to put it kindly. It was not a deliberate lie. Is he alluding to like the courts got it wrong when when Priscilla failed in her malicious prosecution? Is it, I, I don't know what he's trying to say here. And mind you, Priscilla, I never took the stand. Um, Priscilla took the t stand. Is he alluding to her like giving incorrect information? And the people that she had take the stand for her, they hardly had anything to say at all. They were just like, yeah. I saw the Twitter account. Yeah, I saw the Dropbox. I mean, are is he alluding to them 
giving incorrect information. I don't know. Bad. So I do want to go over this is part of uh, what the judge wrote down when he granted the preliminary protective order for Priscilla. And what the judge writes down and what Priscilla actually wrote down in her petition are different. The only thing I can think of is that Priscilla, what she did write down, didn't uh, meet the requirements of a preliminary protective order. So she must have pulled this out of her butt because she says, um, that I was using phrases such as take out and then references to firearms. In court, Priscilla actually admitted that the take out reference was never directed to her. It was directed to political opponents, which first of all, I never said that anyways. I'm not, I don't talk like that. And then she, uh, when she says reference to firearms, that was never even brought up in court. Like there was no references to firearms. So it seems like Priscilla lied before the judge because what she wrote, which is right here, didn't meet the standard. She just says that I've continually been threatening to the safety of her and her family and her associates, blah, 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 blah. Apparently I've shared her private information, which we already concluded in court. Priscilla made this information uh, public record and the workplaces she mentioned, I mean, there were articles. You can Google search it. You don't have an issue with the articles being up, but you have an issue with me seeing it and taking a screenshot of it. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Talks about the no trespass and the cease and desist. And you know, that cease and desist she sent to me, I thought it was hilarious because she tries to freaking extort me in the thing. She tries to put prior restraint on my free speech. Y'all already know, I am not fond of anyone infringing on any of my rights, but man, my free speech, oof, don't mess with it. And this is some transcripts from um, trial we had for the criminal uh, charge of sharing her, what she consider, considered um, private information. And this was what the judge was saying. He says, what came next, or at least what ensued, was a no trespassing notice that came from the complaining witness, which she had served from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. And then, this is where I think he got it wrong. I think he meant for this one, it's not again another no trespass notice. It was a cease and desist, um, which she had served through the Frederick County Sheriff's Office, which instantly converted those instruments into public records where the information on those was a public record of the sheriff's department. It was no longer an exclusive secret bit of information. It got disseminated through a, gover through a public governmental agency. And so the starting point for the court is that while that very same information subsequently got published by the defendant, it was information that the complaining witness herself had dis dis disseminated to the public eye. I mean, the charge was, was dismissed because of that. Um, this here is the, uh, when we had the hearing on the protective order, this is what I got. It's the denial of the protective order. And you can watch that video if you want. Um, but be it, she lacked violence, force, or threat. And, you know, let's go ahead and do this. I do want to, um, play this here. So I don't have exactly what part this was. I didn't write it down, but I took this little two and a half minute clip of Priscilla Bolito admitting no threats occurred, which really proves David Sparkman wrong. And when he's claiming threats went down, but let's, let's hit play. When you spoke to these deputies, they asked you if there were any threats being made, any threatening messages. Is that correct? I, I, I don't recall, sir. Right. Well, do you recall a statement you made to one of the deputies <coughs> that I haven't received any, like, threatening messages? 
That's that's correct, sir. Okay. And would it make sense that that statement was made um, a few days before the protective order mm -hmm. was issued? I'm, I'm not certain, sir. Okay. To dates. Okay. But as of a few days before the protective order was issued, that's a true statement. You hadn't received any threatening messages. I hadn't been told that I was going to be killed or hurt or maimed. Okay. All right. Any of that. But that was a true statement that you would have told the deputies. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And between the time you told the deputy that and you got the protective order, there were there were no threatening messages sent, correct? As defined as being killed told them when to be killed or hurt or something or maimed or um, the magistrate in March, um, the female magistrate at the jail. The one that would not issue the protective order? Yes, sir. Um, she asked me actually those things. Have, have you been threatened? Has the, have you been threatened to be killed or hurt yet? And I, I have not. How many times did you go to the magistrate for the protective order? Um, I went to that female in March and then um, in May to um, on May 26, I believe. So twice? Yes, sir. Uh, these might sound like stupid questions, but Ms. Scarborough has never attacked you physically. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, All right. She never tried to use any weapon against you. No, sir. All right. Never gone after you with her car. No, sir. Never applied any force against you personally. Physical force. No, sir. All right. I mean, it's right there. It's right there. So, um, I only have one more thing to show, and uh, David Sparkman claiming that the Sheriff's Department revoked my concealed carry permit for whatever reasons he's wanting to say, uh, whether it was a, I'm a felon or whatever. Um, by the way, don't do that. That's defamation per se. You're imputing criminality on someone. You need, you better have a indictment or a conviction of that, okay? Um, so I wanted to show here. This is what I got from the court. And as you can see, circled in red, the state police petitioned the court because they're like, hey, there's this protective order. Uh, she's got, you know, a concealed carry permit. So even though I had a court date for this, um, like I showed up, it was still procedural. Like I, I think I already said it earlier in the video. They, I never had um, the hearing on the protective order at this point when I had to show up. And that's because it kept getting um, uh, continued because we wanted all these things lumped into one court date. Uh, so it went over, I think it's like allotted time for a pre preliminary protective order to really be active, but at the same time not. So. As far as the state police was concerned, um, there was a protective order on me. It was procedural. The courts revoked it. That's it. Um, I really think that David Sparkman needs to stop lying about people. I've, this is not the first time that he has done this and said really just wrong things, lies. He can be really nasty, too. Um, so anyways, that's, that's the video. Um, I would uh, hope everyone had a great holiday. And let's hope this is like the last uh, episode of me addressing nonsense. Um, so there you go.